combined gas law, at least those ones you have already encountered them uh, at some point. So therefore, it is one of the simpler units uh, that you'll come across. It's a first year unit. It is an introduction. Uh, inter it is an introduction unit to physical chemistry. So in the course outline, we'll look at the properties of gas laws, ideal gas law, kinetic molecular theory of gases, Maxwell Boltzmann distribution, real gases. Uh, in the real gases, we'll look at the Van der Waals equation, physical equilibrium, uh, liquid vapor equilibrium, chemical equilibrium. Basically, we will look at the chemical equilibrium. Once again, you realize that even as we look at chemical equilibrium, some of the concepts you have already learned uh, in high school. Ionic equilibrium, Ka, K, 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 K water, uh, acid dissociation constant, water, Kw is water dissociation constant, Ka is acid dis dissociation constant, Kb, base dissociation constant, of buffer and buffers, buffers and buffer solutions. Uh, calculation of pH. Uh, when we are calculating the, the pH, that's when we come across the Kb, Ka, Kw uh, during the calculations. So of course, so to, to, to cut the long story short, we will look at the gas laws. Generally, the gas laws. Generally, we will look at chemical equilibrium calculation of the equilibrium constant, uh, calculation of the pH, the pH of strong acids, strong bases, weak acids and weak bases. Uh, then we look at solubility and solubility product. This is uh, for those salts that are insoluble. Uh, for the insoluble salts, then we look at solubility and solubi uh, solubility and solubility products. Then we have electrochemical processes. These are the cells, the galvanic cell, uh, EMF. Uh, basically what we learned in high school, at, uh, especially the electrochemistry, because uh, physical chemistry one is just an introduction unit to physical chemistry. So you will find that most of the things you have already encountered them uh, in, in high school. So in the practicals, you look at the Lichatrius principle. Again, uh, this is something that was covered in high school. Uh, Lichatrius principle, redox titration, and electrochemistry, pH titration. Yeah, so basically, it is not one of the harder units that you come across. It's one of the simpler units, organic one, physical chemistry one, inorganic chemistry, uh, principles of inorganic, those are the, the simplest, but also they are very vital, especially in understanding, let's say, uh, after this, you will be looking at the next physical chemistry will be chemical thermodynamics. Uh, chemical thermodynamics would be a nightmare without physical chemistry one, because physical chemistry one now lays the foundation of all the physical chemistry. So it's a simple unit, but it's also a foundational unit. So it's also important to understand the concepts that are in there, because uh, when you'll be looking at uh, chemical thermodynamics, uh, when you'll be looking at electrochemistry, you will re you will find uh, most of the concepts uh, are borrowed from physical chemistry one, and so uh, we go now to the gases, the gaseous state. We know we have three states of matter: solid, liquid, and gas. Uh, the difference is the forces of attraction uh, between the molecules. For the gases, the intermol uh, the forces of attraction between the particles is very weak. The gases are able to move uh, very far apart from each other. So what exists in gases are the intermolecular forces of attraction because gases are mainly molecular in nature. So we have intermolecular forces of attraction and they are very weak forces of attraction. Uh, in liquids, the forces of attraction are much closer, or they're much stronger compared to the gaseous state. 
And in the solid state, the forces of attraction are, are quite strong and the particles are arranged in a uniform manner in definite positions uh, within the crystal lattice. So the particles are also arranged in a definite manner, but in liquid, uh, uh, the particles are not arranged in a definite manner. And so in gaseous uh, state. So in liquids, uh, in solids, uh, I just want to summarize as we move. In solid state, particles are in, are fixed in a uniform man, manner in definite position in a crystal lattice by strong forces operating between them. So in, in solids, we have strong forces of attraction and also the particles are arranged in a uniform manner. In liquid state, particles are able to move freely with weak forces of attraction between the particles compared to solids. So compared to solids, the force of attraction uh, between the particles is quite weak in liquids and the particles are also able to move uh, freely. Uh, but these forces of attraction are not weak enough to allow complete separation of the particles from one another. So they have weak forces of attraction but those are not enough to break the molecules into two. Now, in gaseous state, the forces of attraction have been overcome completely, such that the particles move in a complete random manner and at high speeds. Uh, if somebody entered a class and they have worn a certain perfume, it's very easy for the perfume particles to move from where that person is to the last student in class. So the gaseous particles, uh, the force of attraction have completely been overcome and they move in a random manner and also at high speeds. So gases have no definite shape or volume, but liquids have definite volume. I don't know whether it has been stated somewhere. Uh, liquid has a definite volume, yeah. Liquids have definite volume but they do not have a definite shape they take the shape of the of the container solids have definite shape and definite volume liquids have definite volume but no definite shape gases have no definite shape and they have no definite volume so the sensitivity to change in volume uh, with change in pressure and temperature increases from solids to gaseous gish, uh, state. So gases, uh, they, are, they are easily influenced by the changes in pressure and changes in temperature. So clearly, the importance of relationship between volume, temperature and pressure is only important for the gaseous state. The gaseous state is highly affected by gas, uh, by the volume, pressure, and temperature. And so this will be our subject uh, in this particular chapter. In the gas laws, uh, we will be looking at how uh, gases behave in relation to temperature, in relation to pressure, and in relation to volume. So we cannot, uh, the, the other thing is that experiments with a large number of gases reveal that four variables are sufficient to define the state or condition of a gas. So we have four variables that we can use uh, to sufficiently define the condition of a gas. So these variables are temperature, pressure, volume and quantity of the gas and the quantity of the gas will be given by the number of moles sorry which we use a small n so these laws that reveal the state or, or the condition of a gas with the relationship to temperature pressure volume and number of moles are known as gas laws or equations of state you're saying that laws 
that define the condition or the state of a gas in terms of temperature, pressure, volume, and number of moles are called the gas laws or equations of state. Let's look at the first gas law, which tells us the relationship between pressure and volume. That is the Boyle's law. The first person to investigate the relationship between gas and its volume, the pressure of a gas and its volume, is uh, Robert Boyle. So in the Boyle's law, uh, Uh, so, a quantity of gas is trapped in a tube behind a column of mercury. Let me show you the experiment. It's here. This is the experiment that he performed. So, this is, you have, this is the gas, and this is the mercury, and this is the atmospheric pressure. So, according to Boyle, uh, when the mercury is is not much when you don't have much mercury it is exerting a uh, literal pressure so when the pressure is low in 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 case a in our experiment a when the pressure is low because you have uh you don't have much mercury and so you have inserted you have exerted little pressure the volume is 60 ml for example here in our case but you've increased the mercury so that at the same time you increase the pressure, the volume is 30. So basically, when the pressure is high, the volume is low. And when the pressure is low, the volume is high. And that is the Boyle's law, that the volume is inversely, pressure is inversely proportional to volume at constant temperature. If we keep the temperature constant, the pressure is inversely proportional to inversely proportional to volume. Yeah, so that is the first uh, the first law that you're going to look at. So, uh, experiment just briefly. A quantity of gas is trapped in a tube behind a column of mercury. Boyle changed the pressure on the gas by adding mercury to the tube. He found that the volume of the gas decreased as the pressure increased. The pressure exerted on the confined gas is varied and the change in volume is recorded. A relationship between pressure and volume is determined. Pressure is manipulated variable and volume is responding to the variable. The temperature and the amount of gas are constant. They are controlled variables. For example, doubling the pressure causes the volume to decrease by one half uh, of its original value. Plots of pressure again is volume at constant temperature. We call isotherm. When the temperature is constant, the reaction is isothermic. Uh, it is taking place at constant temperature. At two different temperatures uh, will be shown below. So the Boyle's law states that at constant temperature, the volume of a definite mass of a gas is inversely proportional. To so, and this is the relation V is inversely proportional to pressure. If we want to remove this proportionality symbol, then we can say V is equals to K over P. Let me use the, the whiteboard. Is the whiteboard.
obvious thing. Even if I take such as a, a simple example, if I have this piston, and then we have a container that has a specific amount of gas. Let me extend the piston. When you apply pressure, sorry? Excuse me. Anything. Can't see. Can't see anything. I need to use another color instead of white. I'm using black. We are not seeing. We are not seeing anything. It is still in white boarding in progress, and there is nothing. Now, now. Yes, we can yeah. see. Not yet. Yes, Somebody is raising the Yes, yes. The has gone black. Very dark now. Yes. Is there anybody board. who is able to see the white board? No. Yes, no. Madam. Yeah. I'm seeing, yes. I'm seeing the, yeah? I'm seeing the white board and something drawn. See, that's what yes, I'm, I'm able see. to see. Is what I'm trying oh, to explain. Yes. 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 Sometimes it's a challenge to see the whiteboard because the screen of the phone is a bit small. But it came and went off. We can't see anything. I'm is using a phone and it is. I'm seeing. I'm seeing the whiteboard. Can you see? Madam, what we are. In, okay, what yeah, are you? I'm, I'm yeah, even yeah. what you've drawn. You can see. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah yes. Yeah. Ah, okay, that's all. About I can see too. Yeah, so basically, I'm trying to just show a small example. Assuming that we can't, can't see anything. Assuming the volume is 100 centimeters, as, or centimeters cubed. And then I apply, I apply some force or I apply pressure on this piston. When the piston moves down, the pressure of the, uh, of the container will increase, but the volume will now not be 100, but it will be something like, let's say, 50 centimeters cubed. So basically, I, I just want for you to be able to visualize in simple terms this is a piston we have a hundred uh, ml of gas of centimeters cubed of gas if i press the piston down the pressure in the container will increase and when the pressure increases and when the pressure increases then the volume will decrease. So volume is inversely proportional to pressure. Just like how it has been written in the, uh, in the handout. Now to remove the proportionality uh, symbol, then we can say volume is equal to, now we remove this symbol and insert a K, so that it become K, one over P, which is equivalent to K over P, which is, which is equivalent to K over P. So once you get K, V is equals to K over P, then 
v is equals to k over p. If we cross multiply, uh, we multiply volume times p, then we get that v or pv When we cross multiply, then we come up with PV is equals to K, where K is a constant. Pressure times volume is equals to K just by cross multiplying uh, pressure times volume, like that. So PV is equals to K, which is equivalent to saying that Pressure one, volume one is equals to, because it is a constant, then it is equals to pressure two, volume two. Pressure one, volume one is equals to pressure two, volume two. And this equation represents the Boyle's law. And the Boyle's law states that at constant temperature, pressure is inversely, or volume is inversely proportional to pressure. When you remove the proportionality symbol, then you have V is equals to K over P. When you cross multiply, then you have PV is equals to K. If pressure times volume is a constant K, then P1 V1 is equals to P2 V2, and that symbolizes uh, the boils low. So let me go back to the notes. So basically, I just wanted to show this expression. So from the figure, the volume in uh, as volume increase, the pressure decrease, and vice versa. So therefore, Boyle's law can be expressed in mathematical terms as volume is equals to a constant times 1 over P. That is because, because pressure times volume, when we remove this proportionality constant, then we will have V is equals to K over P. Now, P times V is equals to K, which is a constant. So that's why we are saying PV is equals to a constant. The equation PV describes uh, this a hyperbola. It's a hyperbola. And uh, P then is a constant. Oh, sorry. Let's see the plot of when you have pressure times vol uh, uh, if you plot a graph of pressure against volume when the pressure is high you can see the volume is low but when the pressure is very low here then the volume is very high so this is the curve uh, you would get these kinds of curves when uh, plotting uh, or when illustrating the boils low so an illustration of the Boyle's experiment in the volume in A, the volume of a gas is trapped in uh, that is trapped in J2 is 60 ml when the gas pressure is 760. When mercury is added, the gas trapped is compressed. The volume is 30. When the total pressure is 1520, when the pressure is high, the corresponding atmospheric pressure exerted by 760 ML, okay, yeah. So basically, the plot of Boyle's law should have these kinds of curves where at high pressure, the volume is very low, and as the pressure decreases, the volume increases. So if you want a straight curve, then a plot of P against 1 over V will be a straight line. But when you have P against V, it will be a curve. So we are saying it yields a line with a constant with a constant gradient that is given by the PV. 
Hence, hence PV is equals to K is another way of stating the Boyle's law. So if you plot pressure against one over volume, you will get a straight line curve and the gradient will be a constant and the gradient will give us a uh, PV. So we are saying that at a given temperature, if the volume of a gas is V1 and the pressure is P1, then if the volume changes to say V2, then the pressure will change to P2. And consequently, pressure one, volume one, should be equals to pressure two, volume two, because PV must remain constant. Now, this, uh, the usefulness of uh, Boyle's law is to help us to calculate the volume of a gas at any given pressure uh, if, the, uh, if, if the other volume or the other pressure is known. So for example, the volume of a gas at one atmosphere is 390. So pressure one is one atmosphere, volume one is 390. Calculate the volume that the gas will uh, occupy if the pressure is increased to 1.5 atmospheres. So pressure 2 is 1.5, volume 2 is X. So here we just apply P1, V1 is equals to P2, V2. And so we insert the values and make V2 the subject of the formula. So V2, from here, V2 will be P1, V1 over P2. You can see it. So you just uh, put in the values 1 times 390 over 1.5, you get that. When the pressure is 1.5 atmosphere, the volume is 260 centimeters cubed. So when we increase the pressure, then the volume decreases. Kindly, uh, calculate, calculate the volumes that will be occupied uh, by a given gas at given final pressure by gases whose initial volumes are given and the temperature is constant. So calculate volume two. Initial volume has been given, initial pressure has been given, and the final pressure has been given. So what is V2? So you can work out You can work out part question C. And question A. Work out question A and C. I'll give you. Four minutes, two minutes for each. And by the way, before I forget, you will not survive this unit without a calculator, a scientific calculator. The phone calculator will not suffice. So kindly, if you don't have a scientific calculator, make sure you get one uh, because practically this unit is calculation through and through. Hakuna Mamboya theory mingi. Sana sana it is calculations and sometimes we encounter some bigger values. And so kindly the next time we meet, make sure you have a good scientific calculator. So for our exercise, Kindly work out question 1A and question 1C. And then um, let me give you five minutes. 748, uh, you should be having the answer. So work out those two questions. Take us back to the question we have not copied fully.
Ya terus. Hello. Ya seru. Yes, we are true. We are through, madam. Hello. We are through. Tell me your answers. I want to mark. <clears throat> <laughs> Tell us you are first. <laughs> the first question Did you get 150? 150? It is only 150. Yeah, 150. The second one. Like and the second one? Yes, 150. Hey, what what tell me on Makelale? So let us work the correct ones together. But mark for that far, madam. So, um, so, uh, it's, a, it's a very simple question. We have the pressure. We have the pressure. We have two pressures and one volume. 
so we are just going to apply the formula pressure one uh, p1 v1 is equals to p2 v2 so in our first case kindly let me know what was pressure one pressure one is anybody sorry pressure one is Seven fifty million milligrams of Seven fifty. That is pressure one. Millimeters of mercury. MMHG. Pressure two. Seven sixty. Ah, seven sixty. So this one, the volume will not change much, and the volume one. 152. 150. 150. 152. 152. 152. Yes. So, uh, yeah. if you want to know volume 2, it is pressure 1, volume 1, divide by pressure 2. So, pressure 1 is 750. 750 times volume 1, which is, is it 151? Oh, 152. 52. 52. 52. Divide by 760. And when you work it out, when you get? 150. You get 150. Yeah, so basically, that is how you can use the Boyle's law to, de uh, to determine either the if you have three variables that are known, two pressures and one volume or two volumes and one pressure, then you can be able to determine the third one. So the second one will work it out the same way. What do you get the value for C? Our volume 2 will be? Yeah? 190. 190. Yes. Is that what they... Is that what everybody got? No. Oh, yes. Yeah. No. 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 Hey. So, uh, okay, we then. We got 190. If it's contentious, then. If it is contentious, let me just list it down. The 889. So, one, one atmosphere, pressure one times volume one. 52. So, one atmosphere. Time. Well, so one atmosphere times 5250 divided by 1.35. 1.35. What do you get? 3,800. 3, 3, 3, Nine. 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 My goodness, we are saying 38 point? No, it's no. not 38. No. 38,000? It is 3,888. 3,888.8. Point eight eight. The current. Okay, yeah. So that three thousand eight hundred and eighty-eight point eight eight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So thank you. So yes. yeah. So basically, the one so doctor, the what if is so? Hello. I can't hear you. Hello. Okay, so whoever is speaking, they can lift up their hand so that we avoid everybody switching on their microphone because there is some echo. It is causing echo. So who was speaking? Yes, Sylvester. Unmuted. Yes. Doctor, I I have got the same answer. Three thousand eight hundred and eighty-eight point eight eight. 
Mm. But, but I have a, a concern. The whiteboard is not displaying in my 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 handset. If it is a phone, sometimes you can it doesn't show because the screen in the phone is small. So sometimes it doesn't show. But if you have a laptop, it's a sure bet that you will see the screen. Okay. okay, let me switch to my laptop. Yeah. If you're using a phone, don't don't keep on complaining that you can't see the whiteboard. You will not see it. It happens a lot. But we are using the phone and then we can see the whiteboard. You, you know, sometimes I don't know whether it's because of the orientation of the phone. I don't know. But most of the times when some people are using their phones, they are not able. Sometimes they are not able to see the whiteboard. But with the computer, you are sure hey. you will see it. Doctor, question. Yeah. There is a message on my phone. Yeah. She says that this organization only allows members to participate. Maybe that is a problem. Exactly. What do you mean? Okay. Kuna message ko. Simu. Because Ababu, you have not used your uh, nini. You have not used your university uh, email. Number. You have used. You've not used the university email. You have used either Gmail or Yahoo Mail to register. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it should have my life, somebody, my life, something, something, not Gmail or Yahoo mail. If you're using Gmail or Yahoo, then it will give you such a message. Okay, thank you. So let us go to the next, uh, the next uh,